Hi, uh, I'm Navraj Pradhan and I'm a mountaineering enthusiast. I've uh, done two peaks in the past couple of years uh, here in the central Himalayas in Nepal. The first was Island Peak, which is about 6,100 6, meters. And just last year I did Mira Peak, which is about 6,467 meters, 6,500 meters. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what you need to pack and what essential requirements are needed in terms of clothing, uh, as well as uh, you know uh, uh, some some kind of food, uh, and also some some tips about uh, mountaineering in in, in Nepal. Uh, and uh, this season I'm headed to uh, Loguche uh, East Peak, which is about again 6,100 meters. And I'll also be doing Island Peak again, which is 6,100 meters. Both are, uh, 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 they call it a trekker's peak, but uh, it is a bit technical and Lobuji is, is much more technical than Island Peak. I'll be flying into Lukla soon uh, and heading to the Gokyo region, Gokyo Ri, beautiful lakes, uh, to acclimatize uh, before I head to high camp, uh, do Lobuji and make my second attempt to Island and these tips that I'm going to show you in terms of clothing and all are from experience for my climbing in, 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 in Nepal in above 6,000 meters and I hope it helps you uh, prepare yours. Uh, I've used uh, um, uh, a Kempalong Adventures a trekking agency and company based out of Kathmandu, Nepal. They've been uh, really good with their services uh, and I'll be using them again. Uh, what is to be recommended is when you use services and agencies, uh, please look for the professionalism, uh, which I'm sure most of them give. But uh, I, I really recommend even in these 6,000 meters, they provide you with satellite phones and even uh, you know emergency oxygen, which we used in Mira, even though it was just 6,500 meters. So uh, let me run you through the gear that you need right from your toe to your head and uh, and what you can mix and match and so that you are well equipped uh, uh, to go up higher up in the mountains apart from just trekking i think you need to take more care and uh, and be aware of uh, the the high altitude mountaineering uh, when you go above 5500 or 6000 meters and I'll run you through. You see, this is the spread of essential gear, clothing, uh, shoes, equipments, and also uh, very basic uh, fooding uh, and other things that are required for your trips to uh, the Nepal Himalayas. I'll start with uh, clothing here. We've, uh, I've spread it out in a, uh, in a way that it goes from your legs toe to your pants to your t-shirts to jackets um, to, to hand uh, gloves and right up to uh, your head so we start with socks here what I've realized is you need um, really good comfortable socks during your trekking time and very, when you are acclimatizing before you summit so you need some base layer thin socks as soon as you land in places like Lukla this uh, series I really like because it's got some extra cushioning uh, of your heel and toe and this I will be definitely using as soon as I land in Lukla and up. So you move on, uh, you have different varieties, thicker woolens which I will be using at higher camps, uh, a base camp uh, and then uh, 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 during my summit I usually mix a base layer uh, and uh, merino wool minus 15 it works very well uh, st your toes stay warm and 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 that's what's uh, required uh, your uh, undergarments and our breathables are here when we move on to the pants i have some trekking pants uh, three of them which i will use along the way then uh, in my inner layer i have this polar tech uh, it's it's fairly warm uh, when I I'll be using this uh, and uh, in in my summit this and a mixture of my down pants which I will be uh, doing during the summits in case it rains and snows I have this Gore-Tex shell which I'll be using on top of this or even this in my summit and just in camps I have a track pant which I'll be using 
and uh, other thinner uh, base layers. Now moving on to uh, your chest, your t-shirts. Uh, I've got some cotton half t-shirts, uh, but more important are these uh, uh, dry fit uh, full, full sleeve uh, shirts. I've realized that through the past uh, treks, I usually sweat and the cotton really doesn't dry quickly. So the dry fit really works for me. I put, uh, I wear one and put one in my backpack so that, uh, uh, you know, I can replace and change them immediately if I'm sweating. So this is what works for me. For my inner, I have base layers, a uh, few of them. Uh, this is particularly very, very nice and warm. It's the new Polotech series, which I use in my uh, summit. Uh, I mix this. Uh, I wear a jacket down uh, and I'm good to go. So coming back up to your outer layer for your upper body is you definitely need a fleece jacket. This is a very good series for Mountain Hardware. I've used them, it's beautiful. Uh, and you need a wind uh, icebreaker jacket with a hoodie. I also wear this during summit days uh, to, to protect yourself from snow and rain is need this light uh, rain snow wind icebreaker jacket and definitely you need one down uh, at least a 650 highly recommend an 800 down for your upper body so when i'm summiting i usually mix myself with this this and uh, and, and a down and uh, i carry this in my backpack so so that uh, you know if it's raining and stormy when you're summiting or coming down uh, you, 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 you're, you're nice and dry. For the hands, uh, for camps, I usually take my uh, this really nice Kashmir Nepali pashmina uh, uh, mittens, uh, which is very good. Uh, the base layers, uh, I use uh, this uh, silk gloves. Uh, I mix it uh, in camps. I can also wear this woolen. Uh, the thicker ones are this which I wear up at high camp and then when I'm climbing and doing uh, going above 6,000 meters I wear this which has a nice woolen layer uh, inside I would wear a woolen this and, and the thicker gloves which will help me you know uh, grip uh, say if I'm doing Juma or in a technical peak, peak like Island or Lobuche these are much more comfortable than mittens so that's what I, I would do for your neck, uh, you definitely need in the Himalayas uh, uh, what we call the buff. This is a Polartec uh, woolen buff. Uh, it's worked very well for me in my past mountaineering trips to Mira. This is a new series that I've bought. It's a company called Buff itself. Uh, it's uh, UV protected and also uh, it keeps uh, the moisture in your mouth uh, uh, really moist uh, the tendency in the high mountains is when you suck in cold air uh, uh, you don't want to do that you want to keep the uh, moist uh, heat within your around your mouth so the buff really helps in that uh, I take my uh, small uh, towel with me in my day pack and the other one if I have a shower up uh, this goes in my uh, uh, duffel bag in terms of uh, sunglasses, I always take two. One is here, uh, in case you break down, it's happened to me before. It's better to be careful than sorry and not have sunglasses in that kind of UV radiation up in the mountains. And of course, uh, you need uh, snow and ski glasses uh, once you're up there. Uh, it gives you, I mean, it, it, that again all depends on you. It uh, gives you a better perspective of this and it's uh, of course uh, UV and and, and uh, it's got UV protection. You need a sun hat in the low altitudes. I have this, uh, been ha having this for years. It's detachable, it's foldable. I can put it in my pocket, uh, you know, it works really well. For your head in the colder, uh, up when you when it's colder, uh, uh, I, I carry two, two uh, uh, of these caps, woolen with fleece. Uh, this I wear at camps, but when I do my summit, uh, I'll be wearing this with fleece and there's this new teclo technology, which really keeps and retains the heat and works really well for me when I'm, when I'm doing my summit. Uh, a head torch, very important. 
you can go uh, anywhere from 130, 140, Lumini, uh, uh, Lumini. And uh, I realized that when I come downhill, my knee hurts a bit, so I carry uh, a set of uh, uh, knee straps as well. Uh, so uh, an air pillow at night, which I will, uh, which which is uh, essential as well. Moving on to shoes, I usually carry this at camps. Uh, it's a woolen, nice uh, to walk around the room. Uh, I have my sandals. Uh, it helps me in tea houses when you're going up or even high camps. Uh, uh, my beautiful pair of uh, uh, Saliva boots which has served me well for the past 4-5 years. And I've had this uh, in all my past mountaineering expedi expeditions as well as treks. Uh, this is the new series that I've bought, the La Sportiva G2SM. And after doing a lot of research, I think this is one of the best mountaineering boots that I've uh, come across. I'm yet to use it, uh, which I will be using this time in Lobuche and Island Peak. Uh, what the beauty of this is got uh, an inner line, so your socks already, your two layers, you've got this, uh, and it goes in into a outer la layer, and this also acts as gaiters. And uh, this is highly recommended for 6,000 above meter peaks. Apart from shoes, uh, uh, sandals, uh, the other essential is the are uh, the poles. I usually take two sets of poles, one for lower altitude, one for higher. Uh, just in case sometimes your poles don't work. There are there have been cases when your poles have failed, so it's always recommended that uh, you take you take two poles. Uh, water bottles. Uh, I have uh, my Camelback two liter, which is. Uh, which I'll be using throughout the trek, uh, up to high camp, uh, up to even yeah high camp. Uh, my Camelback uh, water bottle, which I will also fill with hot water. Uh, you know, put it in my sleeping bag at nights. Uh, and then you need definitely a good insulated flask because I've realized that when you go higher up, six thousand meters, uh, you need you need good insulated flask to keep you hydrated when you're climbing up this steep and technical peaks uh yes uh, a money pouch is essential as well uh, because uh, you'll be carrying a whole lot of uh, uh, nepali currency uh, while you while you travel uh, uh, for lobuche and island highly recommended you get a helmet uh, i've just bought this from black diamond and it works really well uh, now uh, getting to technical gear this is a Juma that I use, uh, uh, which you also use in Lobuche Island and uh, a small bit in Mira, a harness, figure of eight, carabiners, uh, uh, an ice axe, which is uh, important for all three, even if you're doing Mira. Now, what I've realized is, uh, I, this is a new series that I've bought, is the, the inflatable mattress. It uh, is highly recommended, especially if you've got weak and some issues with your spine already. Uh, uh, this is just not in high camps and base camp, but I also would be using it throughout my treks if the mattress is, uh, you know, a bit uh, funny and uh, and my back doesn't work. So I, I I'm going to take that self-inflatable mattress, uh, which really works for me uh, because I have sort of a, a back issue. Uh, you need, uh, you can either rent uh, for all these uh, summits uh, uh, the sleeping bags, but uh, I've invested in this really nice minus 20 Jack Wolfskin uh, sleeping bag. Uh, it's worked for me in both my climbs in the past. Uh, you definitely need an inner liner, a cotton inner liner, which retains not only heat, but if you're sweaty at night, uh, you don't ruin and you know wet your sleeping bag. So this uh, can be dried again during the day. Uh, there's a little Nepali touch to my sleeping arrangement, which I uh, always take is this, it's called dolai or a very soft, small cotton blanket. Uh, I take it with me wherever I go in the world, even if I'm in a five-star hotel. And moving on to uh, your day pack, I usually carry this. Uh, it carries all my day essentials. It's a 35 liter ba uh, 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 backpack. And then the whole series of what 
I have realized that I need during my trek and high camp uh, experiences in the past. Uh, the, the, the sets of food, cans, some dry meat, chocolates, uh, dry fruit. Uh, uh, yes, you need an extra pair of batteries, uh, some biscuits, energy, energetic biscuits, bars, uh, soy milk, which I uh, which I like when I'm in, in high camp or even on a day of summit. Uh, coffee and what I wanted to show you was these warmers which have really helped me during my Mira climb uh, your toe hand and back warmers uh, there's also this uh, uh, the, the, the cold pack so in case you get a cramp it's uh, it's very easy and uh, you must I think these are essentials and extra bits which might as well keep you warm uh, Sunscreen, these are lower uh, altitude sunscreens. As I go up, I use the SPF 110, uh, the SPF lip balm, which is also uh, SPF 50, protects you from the sun. Uh, some wet wipes, which I usually take. Uh, all my uh, moisturizer, shampoo, uh, shampoo uh, oil. Uh, it's very essential to take a 2000 what is this 20,000 uh, capacity power bank uh, uh, because if you want to really charge your phone your GoPro your iPads uh, I also use this because there's essential enough uh, sunlight it's a solar pack uh, and nothing to have a renewable energy going up there in the mountains uh, and it uh, really during the day uh, when you're tra uh, when you're walking, you can actually even hang it in your backpack and have it hooked into your power bank, which will be charging. And then at night, you can charge all your devices. Bare essentials are some ointment. Uh, you know, your first aid medical. Uh, I always take this. Apart from this, the Kempalung Agency also provides us first aid medical equipments along with uh, an oxygen and also a satellite phone which i've realized you need it anytime no matter how what you uh, what happened so i think this is uh, uh, a spread of what you will require uh, from uh, if you're coming into the mountains of nepal and doing uh, a few peaks like lobuche island and mira peak if you've got these you're sort of good to go and hope this was helpful